For a very long time, the media has always been based on the philosophy that what bleeds should lead. But here at WTV, we believe that what answers need should actually lead. And that's why in this second part, we look at the stories that add value to your life. In the spirit of celebrating good, we try and identify some of the positive stories and the solutions to the negative stories as well. And now we are just crossing over to the counties, uh, Nelly from the counties. It might shock you that, you know, despite what you're talking about, the El Nino and all that, uh, the kind of uh, mishap it's causing. Now, country records increase in milk production and uh, milk delivered to the processing plants across the country has doubled in the last 10 years, pointing to the growth of dairy sector. As long as we are complaining there's a lot of rain in the country, there's something to celebrate. Exactly, yeah, it's always good to look at the brighter parts. Mm. Of course, our crops are growing, mm. and um, maybe there are those places that weren't getting enough rains, and mm. now with the rains, the production goes higher. Mm. And, and really, it is a very good idea when people focus on beneficial things. For instance, milk. Milk mm. is a good business. Sure. If your bar, as I said earlier, if your mm. bar has been closed down, mm. and especially in the licenses and all that, exactly, you can go for the milk. Yes, it has it, the business is good. People can just focus on that. And right now, when it's processed and packed and everything, mm. it comes to our supermarkets. We're buying it at fifty shillings, and you're getting it at a you know low price. So and, I think. Mm. And talking of celebrating good, you know, Kenya has one of the largest, most developed dairy sector in sub-Saharan Africa and is one of the largest uh, producers of uh, dairy products in Africa. So I think that's, uh, that's something good to start with. Yes. And uh, now to looking at the, on the flip side, mm -hmm. it's good to have a lot of milk in the country. Are we doing enough in terms of preserving and doing value addition? Because mm -hmm. you may have a lot of milk, yes. but if not preserved well, you know what actually happens. And are Kenyans being innovative enough, especially the entrepreneurs, to come up with ways to do yoga, to do mala and all that. I think that's what we should be asking ourselves Yes, right now. and actually I think uh, that part is really well done because mm. when I go to the supermarkets even to shop for the, the dairy mm. products, you get to really take time in the, in the fridges because there's several brands of mm. uh, yogurt, several brands of milk and several brands of you know dairy products. Mm. So I think that part they've really tried. It's just that now we need to be able to afford to purchase mm. them. For instance, butter is very expensive. Mm. Half a kilo of butter is about 500 and something shillings. And butter is a very good product for the family. Mm. But then now we need to be able to reduce our cost of production to be able to cater for that person who would like to enjoy a little bit of this product and mm. it's too expensive. It's too expensive. Yeah. Wow, quite some uh, impressive statistics as we look at dairy sector in the country. In fact, looking at uh, maybe the last 10 years in Kenya, we see dairy industry contributing sig significantly to the GDP, accounts for 14% of agricultural gross. Amazing. Now, look, uh, just um, going to other counties as well and looking at some of the stories making the headlines, uh, positive stories as well as negative stories. For negative stories, we try and get solutions. Now, let's go to matters business. Remember, this is WTV, your Biashara channel. Banking sector in Kenya has been in limbo for quite some time now. Very true. Looking at what has been happening, uh -huh. you know, Dubai Bank, Receivership, Imperial Bank, that's why I'm saying it has been in limbo. Mm -hmm. And uh, don't you think maybe you have so many banks in the country? Actually, we do. Uh, actually, Kenya is overbanked because when you look at the statistics that are showing, mm -hmm. is that 38% uh, is what uh, Ghana has. Uh, in, in Africa, mm. it has the highest number of uh, banks. Mm. Then Kenya uh, ranks number two with 32%. And I mean, it, it is good that we are able to access banks and uh, access our accounts and be able to have uh, saving money here mm. and there and accessing, I mean, being able to, to, to use the new technological ways of uh, mm. banking and everything. But I think it's also a risk because when you have too many uh, banks and are not sustainable, then also the, the, the rate of collapsing mm. becomes higher. Becomes higher. Yes. So I think one of the things that uh, Dr. Patrick Joroga should be looking at is not licensing more banks mm. so that we can work with what is already existing. Mm. It says that over 50% of Kenyans, above 15, already have accounts. So that means even the marketing tactics that are being used is really getting to the ground completely to access, to have young people to have accounts. But also, the country needs to support these banks. Let me the just ask from a point of curiosity, well. uh, when you say that Kenya is overbanked, and it has a lot of banks. Uh, sometimes uh, I have uh, this tendency of asking, 
that, does that not mean that maybe Kenyans are making a lot of money in a lot of banks? Just to ask. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that's the case because um, you don't necessarily need to be making a lot of money to be able to be in the uh, in, 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 to have an account. Mm. Um, it could be just yes, guys came here and told us about the advantages of having an account mm. and we open. So as a company, we all have a small small accounts from Barclays, from whom, from whom like that. But when it comes to the reality, is if they also want to have a sustainable uh, industry, a sustainable sector. They also need to favor us. The economy mm. is not it's not favoring Kenyans at all, mm. and I'm sure it's also not favoring uh, the banks. Because, for instance, mm. Imperial Bank right now is being asked for 40 billion mm. shillings, sure. and they're saying they're the only money that they have right now is 10 billion. And remember that person who has put all their eggs into Imperial Bank, mm. they're in trouble right now because the only amount of money you can access is 100,000. So you know, it, it, when you look at back and forth for all mm. the things that are, are coming in. It's still a bit of a challenge. Uh, talking of the banking sector here in the country, I think even uh, the latest uh, uh, story that I see here, we have uh, five top directors and shareholders at Imperial Bank have been declared to report to the police twice a week, you know, as uh, fraud investigations continue. And uh, this is a very sad story because this is a situation whereby there's someone somewhere who was banking with uh, uh, Imperial Bank. He woke up as a millionaire, but by lunchtime he was broke. Simply because, you know, when a bank is put under receivership, you cannot be in a position to access the money. Yeah. And when, you know, when in and out of the, of the courts now, mm -hmm. when you win, uh, you know, at, at last, what you can access is what you've said, maybe exactly. about 100,000. Yeah. And you can imagine there are people that had a lot of money banking, yeah. you know, in this bank. But I think there's also the point of corruption. Because let me ask you, Imperial Bank has been operating for quite some time. By the time it was getting to 40 billion, and uh, th that's the money that is being asked by the you know, central bank. For, if you want us to, you know, to, to say that uh, Imperial Bank now can operate, we need at least 40 billion. Well, th does it mean no, no one was uh, realizing Watching. that uh, yeah. Imperial Bank is going to the drain? I'm t I, I, it's, it's a Kenyan thing where we wait for disaster. We're just watching disaster happen and mm. it happens and then now we start picking up from there. No, we have an issue. Mm. But looking at the brighter side of it, mm. one of the best companies to work for in the country right now is Chase Bank. Yeah, according to the... Yes, so there's also mm. the, there's a brighter side of it where you, s you get to see that they've attributed to how staff work mm. hard. I think it's something that uh, by mm. the time a staff is really deciding to work hard, for the mm. bank or for a company, then that means the company is also motivating them to it's a good yes. But yes. I think it's a high time that Kenya's now a bit keen with the kind of banks that you know they they take their money. And that's something that has to be looked upon. Because after the fall of Dubai Bank, Imperial Bank, now I think Kenyans are reluctant to bank with the, the banks that are not so so much known simply because of the fear of unknown yes. so i think uh, we need to be a bit extra careful where we do keep our money because at the end of the day if you invest and if you save up to the tune of maybe um, you know 50 million and then you cannot access your money and it's not your fault actually mm -hmm. you, actually you wonder think, who should you blame yeah actually think that the reason that people go for the smaller banks is because the big banks are refusing to give you loans mm. and there's no you can develop yourself if you don't have a loan every day if you expect if you're waiting for that uh, usual mm. income that trickles in every month then your developments and even the <coughs> plans that you have are not you, you're not able to sustain them mm. or even to realize them so that's why the smaller banks are more flexible and they're able to hold you as you take on the journey mm. but the big banks the tier one banks are really tricky so i think when people realize that they decided you know what mm. let me go for the small ones but as you say i think it's good to also have your mm. Uh, check, check, do your background checks on uh, the uh, kind of company you're exactly. working with. Exactly. Yeah. Now let's uh, look at what's making uh, news uh, at the international front. Of course, now report, uh, you know, has uh, indicated that most France attackers had history of crime. That is in France. You remember uh, that Paris attacks. So it, it seems uh, like two suspects are still on the loose, and uh, the authorities are saying they are very dangerous. So I think it's the high time that uh, we, we, we learn how to manage terrorism because you can see France, uh, a developed country, is still struggling with that. And uh, looking at uh, here in Africa, we have Ebola virus re in Liberia, Nelly. 
and West Africa, you know, has suffered the highest death toll, mm -hmm. according to the World Health Organization. And uh, three Ebola cases emerged in Liberia on Friday. Very, very sad. I, I, I think the part of um, eradicating the disease, mm. it did not, it was not as effective for it to have come back uh, in less than six months. Yeah, I, I think. Uh, something needs to be done because Ebola, you know, the way it spreads and uh, managing Ebola sometimes can be a bit tricky. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, being a Monday, we always look at uh, the crazy Monday aspect, chasing away Monday blues. Now the latest that we have is a story that's quite interesting from uh, Zimbabwe here. Nelly, we had uh, Mr. Ugly Contest. <laughs> but now, yeah. the most interesting bit is that there is a uh, there is a bit of clash here. We have uh, the, 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 the pageant judges have crowned a new winner of Zimbabwe's fourth annual Mr. Ugly contest. Wow. Mm -hmm. But now their decision has uh, really, you know, it's upsetting supporters of the crowd favorite and prompting riots at the event. Now, you need to hear what uh, one of the losers had to say. Uh -huh. I'm naturally ugly. Wow. He's not. That is the person they were competing with. He's only ugly when he opens his mouth, you know, because we had uh, Miss on Siri and uh, William Mas Ma Ma Masvinu. Now, Ma Masvinu has really been, uh, you know, the defending champion, if I can call. He has been the <laughs> Mr. Ugly there, but he was defeated. Now, there is a new winner, mm -hmm. that is Miss on Gary, Miss on Siri. And uh, the only thing with uh, Miss on Siri it's that you know he doesn't have teeth yes they, they actually uh spaced the yeah, yeah spaced. so william william was saying no I, i'm more ugly and so i should have been declared the winner what do you think i think it's the high time we start having this kind of a competition here in the country i think it's ridiculous because <laughs> it's it's quite interesting like when you look at yourself and say i'm the most ugly I'm the most and, ugly like, and yeah, i deserve to, I deserve win, to get you know? the win the the the, the mm. award mm. it is it is so it is ridiculous for me i would say but uh, clearly the guys uh, he, he's saying happy. that uh, he was rigged out and uh, you know looking at these photos i think at one point i would agree with the judges but anyway i'm not the i'm not the judge here mm -hmm. But uh, we had some riots at the event saying, you know what, I, I think the person that you've crowned as a Mr. Ugly is too handsome to go uh, with, with that award. I wonder, what, I wonder what's the reward. Eh? Mm. Anyway. Because the, for the beauty queens, they get a car. Yeah, yeah, in fact, going to the details, you, um, we see like uh, some hoping to get some TV contracts, you know, uh -huh. it comes with a lot of fame. So because you are Mr. Ugly, you can be used to endorse maybe some stuff. Th 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 that's why they are talking of uh, uh, TV contract. And also, there's some money here, 500 US dollars. Wow. And that's equivalent to 50,000 Kenya shillings just for being ugly. I don't think you have to work to be ugly. No, you just keep frowning and you doing all the just keep frowning. <laughs> <laughs> and, and funny enough, now the winner, uh, it said that he's only... He's only ugly when he laughs because that's the time when you can see spaces there. Crazy man indeed that you are looking at Mr. Ugly in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. Quite interesting there. Now let's look at uh, what has been happening over the weekend, uh, sports news. It was very interesting to see the big teams in England lose. I'm talking about Arsenal losing to West Brom 1-0 and Manchester City getting a beating from Liverpool. 4-1 was the final score. Of course, Chelsea seems uh, to have started the winning ways after beating Norwich and it was uh, great also we had uh, the El Clasico now this is where there was real humiliation Real Madrid was uh, Real Madrid sorry was beaten four goals by football club Barcelona but now on rather a very motivating note uh, our Kenyan team that is Kenya Harambe Stars was playing Uganda Cranes mm -hmm. Uganda Cranes that's the national team there and uh, for Sekafa Despite all that is happening with our team, our team managed to beat Uganda two goals to nil. I think they deserve a part on the back. <laughs> very true, that's brilliant. And uh, last week, in fact, Nelly, we've just been discussing about uh, what's ailing Harambe Stars, Harambe, St Harambe Stars' trip to Kiva, the Debaco, because you know, there are so many things that happened between FKF, the team, and the Ministry for Sports. So I think it was a good thing. Mm -hmm to see them, you know, they are really determined to make it. Yeah, looking beyond your state. Uh, yeah, your looking beyond your state. And Kenya is currently the defending champion for Sekafa. So I think uh, we may end up also this time round
kind of uh, t uh, being crowned. So that's on, on a good note. Yeah, very true. And uh, we wish our Kenyan team, that is Arambe Stars, all the best. And uh, English Premier League continues next week. Now, we come to the end of our show here at WTV News Review, but you can always give us feedback concerning some of the stories that we've discussed here this afternoon. SMS line is 20058. On Twitter is the WTVK. Use the hashtag News Review so that we're in a position to track your conversation. Now, let's do this again tomorrow.